I did a video a few weeks ago of a PWM speed controller I bought that I wanted to install on my 55 pound thrust Minn Kota. And uh, I hooked it up temporarily just to check it out and see how it would work. And I got a question uh, asking why I didn't hook it up directly to the battery cables. The way I had it hooked up was I had uh, the power going in and the power out I hooked directly to the two wires that go down the shaft to the motor. <clears throat> because that's the way I seen somebody hook it up on a video I watched and uh, their reason for hooking it up like that was because there's a internal potentiometer in this motor that sits back in here it's all epoxied and cased in here and they weren't sure how it was going to interact with uh, with that because the PWM also has a potentiometer so you'd be going from the potentiometer and through your switch and going into the potentiometer and the built-in here so they weren't quite sure how that was going to work so I figured rather than risk uh, ruining anything I was hooking up like they did and initially the way I wanted to hook this up was um, I wanted to be able to use the original speed controller and this in case something happened to this I could resort to using that and uh, the way I I hooked it up was the speed switch <clears throat> has six wires on it you have your main power wires going in you have two that go to that potentiometer and the other two are for the speed control so you have six wires and the way I hooked it up initially when I was trying it was I took the two power outs that go to the down the shaft to the the brushes to the the motor itself and the power outs from this that go to the same and I connected all of them together I connected all four wires together when I tried it on the bench I tried the PMW speed controller and it worked it worked good I shut it off and then went to use the original speed switch controller and what it did was it backfed through the wires because I had them all hooked together it backfed through the power out wires into the PWM and burn a circuit out so although it it didn't harm this using the PWM it did harm the PWM using this the back feed didn't seem to bother the original switch but when it backfed into here it did it burn it out so uh, like I say somebody asked me a question why I didn't hook it up directly and I kind of replied hastily because that's what I was thinking you would burn the switch out but it's only because I had it hooked up that way um, so the next thing I tried to I figured well if I could put a couple of heavy-duty switches in where I could the power out of this and the power out of the original switch I could connect them to the switch and be able to shut it off so it couldn't back feed in and then be able to flip it the other way so I could use the other one and it wouldn't back feed vice versa um, and I couldn't find a double pole double throw 50 amp switch all I could find was a single pole double throw in other words instead of having six uh, six poles each one had three so I used them in conjunction to make a double pole double throw I installed them on the side I hooked the two wires from the out wires from the PWM to one side of the switch to the middle two I hooked the power going down into the shaft and to the other two I hooked the power out from this and it was an on off on switch they call it so on being the power was able to go 
from here to the middle and down and when you hit it in the middle it turned everything off when you switched it down I was able to have the power from here going into the middle and down and then I tried it on the bench and it worked good and I tried it a few times and it worked good so I took it up to the lake and I wasn't on the water for three minutes and the switches burnt I really don't know why well in my opinion they just weren't heavy duty enough they were rated uh, at 50 amps but they were cheap so that being said I figured well I'm just gonna forget about you know the idea of being able to use this and I'll just hook the PWM directly to the motor and, and just eliminate the switch up here don't even connect it at all which is what I did but the only problem was it made it hard to be able to control the speed and steer at the same time so I came up with this idea I put a belt on here a vacuum cleaner belt and now I can use it pretty much as uh, it was intended to use the only inconvenience is uh, instead of being able to go in reverse by turning it all the way back in reverse I have this is the forward in reverse middles off reverse off forward but in any direction I always have to turn it the same way for uh, full speed um, now the reason why I wanted to put this on wasn't so much for being able to go at variable speed or save on battery it was because um, I use this on full speed a lot when I use it in doing so it creates a lot of heat um, for one thing Mankata recommends that you, you don't use these on full speed all the time um, only when you have to go from point A to point B kind of quick but otherwise you're not supposed to use these at full speed all the time because uh, they create heat and I actually burn a couple of switches out in here I had to replace because I'm these days I'm doing more cruising with this than I am uh, fishing or just slow trolling because I really like just riding in that boat um, I got a rubber raft a uh, five-man raft and I just really enjoy it so I'm constantly got it on high speed and another th uh, another thing is um, with the Minn Kota uh, eight-speed switches I've noticed you can really notice the difference between one two and three but between three and four you don't notice that much of a difference there's barely any difference between three and four now between four and five there's a big difference five is faster a lot faster than four it's not uh, as gradual as it is from one two to three um, it really jumps from four to five but it isn't even so much as saving power I could always take three batteries two or three batteries with me enough to stand the lake all day it wasn't so much about the using power it was just basically the heat issue uh, heat's never a good thing for electronics uh, the cooler you can keep your electronics the longer they're going to last uh, the less wear and tear it's going to be on there so anyway um, that being said the way this really saves the power it, in my opinion using this in full speed uses about the same amount of power as your original switch does in full speed where you save the power is um, when you turn this all the way up and just turn it down a hair and reduce the speed a little bit not as slow as you'd go in four that was too slow for me but just by reducing that speed a little bit saves a lot of power and you're not going really that much slower than you are at full speed so that that really works well for me and also this doesn't get hot at all hardly um 
I do have a fan in here um, because I noticed that it did get warm and it's in an enclosure so it's going to get warm so I put some holes in there and I put a fan in uh, I put a fan in the back and it blows out the front it's a little like computer fan 12 volt and without that fan I forgot to turn it on the other day it got pretty warm on the bottom of the box here but as soon as I turned that fan on within a few minutes it cooled right down it was just kept it nice nowhere near as hot as that original switch gets so uh, yeah it, it it saves power for sure just because you can turn it down not as slow as you're going to go in four or as high as you're going to go in five but just a little bit just turning it down that little bit seems to save a lot of power um, I went down I went for a ride down the canal the other day almost nine miles it was like four point something one way and by the time I got back I left I had like 12.7 12.6 volts and by the time I went down and came back I still had 12 volts I was right at 12 volts and that's pretty good nine miles is, is a long way on the water especially using batteries um, and I wasn't going full speed all the way I would uh, turn it up to full speed for a while and then just turn it down a hair and most of the way I went with it uh, turned down like that just a hair and it saved a lot of power okay well back to the question of why didn't I just hook it up to the battery cables well like I say for one thing I wasn't sure how it was gonna uh, work in conjunction with the, the potentiometer that's built into the into the motor here but I figured well I'll try it out I got a 45 pound thrust which is this one that uh, I wanted to put one on so that's the way I, I tried it I hooked it up directly to the leads power going in power going out to the motor and it works it works good uh, using it that way you could turn this all the way up and leave it on and just use your uh, your control handle the way it was intended but the only drawback is although this stays cooler than than that one does because it's a, of course it's a 45 that draws less amps I did put a fan in this anyway. By the way, this is just a temporary box. I'm going to end up putting a box on, on that one like this. But uh, this is a temporary box. So I put a fan in it just to blow off any excess heat. And what I noticed was that the switch still gets hot when you're going at, at high speed. This will stay cool, but your switch still gets hot. So, it, yes, it does work, and it, and it didn't seem to have any adverse effects on anything uh, as far as the potentiometer in here or the speed control in here, but it, it, it does make this hot, and it's defeating the purpose of why I'm putting that on be, is because that was getting hot. So now... In my opinion you have two points where it's where it's getting warm that's the speed controller itself and this now you have two points of of low resistance or whatever you want to call it so my recommendation is uh, just to eliminate the the speed control hook directly up to the two wires the two main wires that go to the brushes and for some reason the wires don't get hot it's just the switch that gets hot but the wires like i the wires on this do not get warm at all now and of course i'm not using the speed switch in it so that's not getting warm just the only thing that gets warm is this and i'm able to control the, the heat of it with the fan i put in it and those fans are cheap you can get them like two bucks a piece and uh, hook them up to the 12 volt source and um, so anyway yeah I spoke kind of hastily when I 
replied to the to the guy asked me why uh, didn't I hook it up directly to the uh, the battery cables of the trolling motor and I told him it would back feed and burn it out well not like that it won't but it did the way I had it hooked up is, I guess is what I, I meant to say so uh, this thing works really good I probably have about 60 hours total on it and it works flawless I don't know how long it's going to last. I mean, these things, these speed controllers only cost like 20 bucks at most. You can get them like 16 bucks. That's what I bought this for. It was about $16 free shipping. And they work really nice. I mean, you got to, uh, you know, it's a little bit of work to set them up and stuff, but, you know, actually it saves it's probably saved me money i mean if i was to it was getting to the point where i had to keep going uh setting this down to four and let it cool off or turn it right off completely to let it cool off because it was really getting hot and the same thing with, with this even though it draws less amps than the 55 it still gets rather hot but it doesn't get hot anymore because now i have this taking its place and uh, this stays cool it goes just as fast and uh, I'm able to go at any speed I want now instead of the ones that are designated by the clicks so yep to answer your question you can hook them up using the battery cables but I just recommend eliminating that switch uh, it's one less thing that it's going to heat up and heat is uh, the worst enemy of electronics so the cooler you can keep things the better and hope this helps you good luck thanks